Hey guys, John from The John Muir Show here, and actually to pick up right where we left off at the end of today's edition of The John Muir Show, yeah, there's a lot of liberal news outlets out there that have just continued to fail their audiences over and over and over and over and over again in the era of Donald J. Trump being the President of the United States. You see, uh, it's become abundantly clear for so many of these leftist outlets that uh, when it comes to the hierarchy of what's actually important to them, that yeah, the thing that's at the uh, top of the list is uh, trying to hide behind some sort of uh, this veil of claiming, oh yeah, when we're independent, uh, we're, we're fair, yeah, we're not biased whatsoever, we're reporting the facts because we're the journalistic watchdog that the media is always supposed to have been. Yeah, they continue to throw that line out there and act like people are somehow going to believe it and uh, behind that veil of course they are just lying to you because they are trying to jam their liberal opinions down your throat try and present it like it's the truth even though it isn't and then just hope like hell you believe the same thing that they believe and that you go to the polls on election day and vote the same way that they vote yeah uh, that seems to be far more important to so many uh, in the fake news media than does I don't know um, actually upholding the uh, journalistic principles they're supposed to, actually having integrity, and actually reporting things without favor. Those things, no, 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 they do not matter to the leftist media in uh, the Trump presidency. Uh, you see, there's so many people, uh, us on the American right, who have uh, fought back against that, who are not just going to accept it, who are going to call out the fake news at every turn, at every lie. And uh, for a lot on the uh, American left, uh, a lot in the liberal media, uh, they try to claim that, oh no, that's just a bunch of mindless sheep, a bunch of mindless conservative sheep who are going out there and uh, defending the president at any cost. He could do anything and they would defend him. Uh, case in point actually comes in a new op-ed in uh, the New York Times. It was uh, by one Thomas Hardiman, where he uh, paints this picture of uh, what if President Trump, uh, to go off the hypothetical that was thrown out there once, what if President Trump actually went out on Fifth Avenue and actually shot and killed somebody? What would happen? And uh, Mr. Hardiman goes on in this piece to claim that, oh, well, uh, congressional leaders like Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell, uh, they would fail to properly rebuke the president, that you would have a uh, House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunes going out there and trying to find some way where he can flip this to actually be bad on the Democrats. You would have Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders going out there and uh, saying that, oh, you know what, I, I, I haven't spoken with the president yet on this, so you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to dodge your questions about this matter. According to Mr. Hardiman, President Trump himself would be going out there just trying to see how he could spin this to be a negative on former President Barack Obama. And uh, meanwhile, uh, what is uh, the role of all of us Trump supporters out there? Oh yeah, we would uh, continue to support him like nothing actually happened. Now, of course, in this uh, completely unnecessary hypothetical, nothing that he says is true whatsoever. You see, we do not stand by President Trump no matter what he does. If he actually murdered someone, guess what? Yeah, the vast majority of Trump supporters, any of us who are reasonable people, we would immediately say, no, this guy is a murderer. We cannot support him. It would be abundantly clear to us. We wouldn't even have to think about it. But yeah, the reason that we do defend the president is that even though there have been times where we've disagreed with certain actions that he has taken. Heck, on our program, we have called the president when we disagree with him. Because there is no sense in always just agreeing with something strictly because somebody you like said or did it. You have to be objective. You have to think, hey, everybody, every politician is going to do some good and they're going to do some bad. And you have to praise the good and you have to criticize the bad regardless of if you like the person or not. You need to take those partisan blinders off. Uh, but you see, we, while we do criticize the president when he does something wrong, it hasn't been a whole heck of a lot of times when you consider that the guy's been in office for 19 months now. I mean, President Trump, by and large, he has been succeeding. It has been a presidency that has been done right by the American people. He is winning here in the United States. He is winning abroad. He's done a hell of a lot of good. So whether you hate the guy or not, you should just be basing it not off of if you vote for him or not, if you like him or not, just based off are the results there or not. And yes, the results are there. So that is why we are supporting President Trump. It's not because we just feel like we were brainwashed and we need to go along with it. You know, see, the problem is actually on the American left. It is the fake news media because the fake news media, even when President Trump does something good, they try to turn it into a negative. They lie whenever they have 
have to, and so often they do have to lie because President Trump is succeeding, and if they want to sound bad, they have to outright fabricate what it is that's happened. People like Thomas Hardiman, they're right there. They do it all the frickin' time. See, us on the American right, you know what we're concerned about? We're not, we're not concerned about uh, giving in to uh, all these lies that the uh, the fake news media tells us and just nodding along. Uh-huh. Yeah, thanks for that. That's, that's wonderful. Okay. It's not true, but don't worry. Since you said it and you claim to be uh, some sort of a reliable source, yeah, we'll, we'll parrot what you say. Yeah, no, no, no. That's not going to fly. That hasn't flown and it's not going to fly going forward. What we're concerned instead is actually dealing with what really matters. The things that actually affect this country. Like, hmm, I don't know. Oh, I've got one for you. Yeah, uh, trying to actually reform our immigration system and actually meaningfully enforce our borders so that uh, situations like what we just saw happen in Iowa where you had some criminalistic thug, some illegal migrant coming into this country and killing a 20-year-old University of Iowa student named Molly Tibbetts. Yeah, we care about uh, actually having a reform of our immigration system to try and prevent those sorts of things from ever happening again so another innocent life doesn't need to be taken. Oh, but for Thomas Hardiman, Thomas Hardiman decided that story doesn't matter. Thomas Hardiman decided to go the route that I've heard other liberals liberals disgustingly go down here in the past uh, week or so since we found out what tragically happened to Miss Tibbetts and he said that you know oh yeah and they, you know if Trump actually so- shot someone on Fifth Avenue yeah the, the Fox News would just go talking about some girl from Iowa yeah um Tom Hardiman, uh, that girl from Iowa, she has a name. It's Molly Tibbetts. And it would be nice if all Americans could actually care. But sadly, so many in the fake news media, so many on the American left do not care whatsoever because they can't use that to fit some sort of political narrative to take down Donald Trump. It is absolutely repulsive what we have been seeing from the fake news in the age of Trump, they should be ashamed of themselves for the constant lies, for completely abandoning all of the principles their field was supposed to abide by, all the things they were supposed to stand for, and yet they have no shame whatsoever because they are so far in the woods they can't see the trees. They do not see the failures that they are engaging in on a daily basis. We will continue to call them on it, and maybe, maybe eventually, they will realize what lying, deceitful, failures they are. That's all the time that we have for today. That got intense, didn't it? Well, the John Muir Show is back tomorrow, bringing just as much intensity, 8.40 a.m. on WTAQ, 9 a.m. WSAU and WHBL. Till next time, I'm out.